you're good to go. All right. Okay, awesome. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Hello and um, welcome to our demo. So I'm going to be the, your Copic instructor for today's project. And my name is Shannon and I'll be with you guys today for the next hour or so. I also have Nate who's going to be in the chat and he'll be there to answer any of your guys' questions. Hello. So before we go ahead and get started with the demo, I wanna let you guys know a little bit about myself and my background. I have been using Copic markers for 11 years now, and I started really getting passionate about art and creativity when I was in eighth grade. And that passion took me all the way through college where I attended the Savannah College of Art and Design and graduated from SCAD with a BFA in illustration. Since then, I've been using those 11 years of tips and tricks and have now applied them with two Corporation Americas and I continue to share those tips and tricks with you guys today. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a little teaser of what we're doing today. And that is using the Copic airbrush system to make this happy Thanksgiving card. So all of the elements you see here besides the um, cursive at the bottom was made with the Copic airbrush system. And this was just a Copic multi-liner pen. So we're going to make um, these stencils kind of leaf shapes here, as well as this blue gradation in the background. And we're gonna get really comfortable with using our airbrush. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over to my overhead view and show you guys the tools that we're going to be using today. Okay, so let me, okay, let me see, perfect. So I've got a lot of things set up in front of me today. I've got our um, markers right here at the bottom. So this is the Copic sketch six piece earth essential set. So we've got two blue colors, two earth tone colors here, and we've got two greens here. I also have my Copic multi-liner pen down here as well. That'll just be used at the end for adding in that happy Thanksgiving note. Um, Copic sketch markers, if you don't happen to have Copic sketch, but have the square shaped Copic classic or the Copic original, that marker is also compatible with the air grip and the airbrush system. And again, just for reference, the marker is shaped like a square, has a square cap to the end. This marker saying that it has the um, medium broad and the width of the marker will work with the air grip. Unfortunately, if you only have the chow marker, which is shaped like a circle, um, it's too skinny and won't fit well here in the grip. So if you've got sketch or the original on deck, that would work for today. I've also got the air can here. This is the D60N. I'll lift that up so you guys can see. Um, this looks a little different than the one on michaels.com simply because it has an N. That just means this is newer. And so it's got a different color here in the middle as well. That's the only difference. And then I've also got my painter's tape, this blue tape here works really well on paper so it doesn't shred the paper when we're peeling it off later. I've also got my scissors, a ruler, some glue. That's just going to be for adhering these shapes onto our card at the end. And then I've also got my air compressor off to the side. I'll bring that more into the camera view in a second once I remove everything else here. But since I'm such a heavy Copic user with these airbrush um, with my markers, I've got an air compressor and I'll let you guys know more about that um, in just a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and start removing things from my workstation and show you guys this practice sheet that I've got in front of me. Okay, so on this practice sheet here, I've got a few things that are laid out. Let me move that as well so you guys can see. Okay, I've got holding the air grip listed up here at the top. And this is at about um, 11 by 17 inch sheet of paper. So this is pretty big, but it's really great for getting that practice started. So I'm gonna start off with holding the air grip close to the paper, fairly close to the surface, like within like a fourth of an inch away to a half inch, and then lifting it up just a little bit and then lifting it up even more. And so I've got about, you know, very close range, mid range and a far range to the paper. And the second thing I wanna show you guys is time. 
So holding your um, you know, air grip still and holding for one, two, or three seconds. And then we're gonna go over line speed, um, making a line with speed, time, and distance, and then filling in an area. So I'm gonna bring in the star of the show, which is the air grip and the air can. And so the only thing you need to really do to assemble this, um, if you flip the air grip over, you see this kind of entry point, just go ahead and snap that in and twist it until it feels snug. What I've learned is that this center seam right here will usually align very well with this center kind of oval shape. So that's how I know it's ready to go. And because I'm such a um, heavy user with the air grip, my can is almost empty. So I'm going to be using the compressor for most of the demo today, but I'm gonna try and use this for just a little bit, just to show you guys that whether you have the air can or if you're using a compressor, the type of ink that comes out will be the same. The only difference is this will only last you a certain amount of time versus the compressor will last you a very long time. Okay, I'm gonna set this down and I'm gonna go ahead and grab my dark brown color from the colors that I'm using today. And that is the E39. And in case you're new to Copic, I'm just gonna show off this sketch really quick. We've got the medium broad and the super brush nib. Now, normally um, I'm gonna be using the super brush for pretty much anything that I'm drawing, but for today, I'm not even gonna use this nib. I'm only gonna use the medium broad. So I'm gonna uncap the medium broad. And this is a very stiff nib, so it's very firm. And what I'm gonna do is slide in the marker from this point down here, the shorter end, right into the grip. So I'll bring that up into view and I'll slide the marker in. And then you know that it's firmly in place when you hear a little snap. So that's how I know that that's firmly in place. So when I pull the trigger here, the air will come out and spray against this chisel nib and that's how the ink will be um, released onto the paper. I do wanna to mention too, I'm holding this with my left hand right now, but I am handed. So I, this is how I like to hold it. And this is what feels good um, in my hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and practice up here. And I do wanna show this, that I've got a practice sheet underneath so that I don't spray anything onto my teal kind of workspace here. Let me remove this piece of paper. Okay, so I'm just gonna practice holding it and I'm going to shoot for the bullseyes here. And I'm gonna hold it close to the paper and then lift it up about half an inch, then lift it up again. So I'm um, here we go, test it out. So I got pretty close, but the ink splattered a little bit. And again, I'm just holding it really close to the paper. I do wanna to mention too, that certain markers um, will spray a little bit differently than others. It just depends on the kind of like the juiciness or how new your marker is as well. If your marker is starting to dry out, you'll start to notice that too when you're using the, um, the airbrush. So this is a very new marker and the ink is kind of excited to be released. So it, it might spray a little bit more, but with more use, it, it will have more control. So before I was going pretty much right up against the paper surface. Now I'm gonna lift my hand up a little bit by about half an inch and just pull the trigger really quickly, aiming for those dots. And now I'm gonna pull it back another half inch and go a little bit further. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take that out and cap it. The reason is, is that I'm not using it right now and I just wanna preserve that marker ink. And I'll lift this up to show. So you can see if you're working a lot closer to the paper, you're going to have more dark colors show up. The saturation will be higher essentially. And then the further away you go, the less saturated or the less dark the colors will be. It needs to travel a little bit further to get to the paper so the colors will come off lighter. Okay, now I'm gonna go down here to the time. 
So this one's really neat in the fact that, you know, you'll start to see how dense and how rich colors can look as you settle the ink in one area for longer. Again, snapping that into place. So I'm just going to do a quick little shot here of just one second, aiming for this kind of dotted circle area. That's one second. One, two. One, two, three. I'll go ahead, whoop, take this out. Shannon, we've actually got a question okay. from the audience. Monero wants to know, can you use the airbrush on canvas? Yes, you can. Okay. There's no like yes. kind of, will you need to hang on to the brush longer or like will, will the canvas accept the ink as well as marker paper would? Yeah, so it will still settle onto the canvas. It might not settle as well as say a, a toothier marker pigment, uh, sorry, paper, but um, it should work for a canvas. Just make sure to work a little bit closer. So here on the paper, you'll see me going pretty far back and pretty close and getting a good range. But for canvas, you need to work closer to the fibers because they're most likely a thicker. All right, cool. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and lift this up to show you guys the one, two, three here. So this was, oh, my paper is crinkling. This was one second, two versus three. And so you can see as you hold the marker in one area, you'll start to get um, more colors that are layering and building up. So of course, you'll get some more color density. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and go to creating a line. And with the lines, I'm gonna focus on how close I am to the paper and you know the time it takes me to get across. So I'm going to shake this. I still hear some fluid inside. So that means I still have some air left. Snap this into place again. That is rather satisfying, I must say. And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn my paper a little bit. And I'm going to work close and move across pretty fast and then do the opposite and take my time. So here we go. And then I'll pause for a second. Now I'm going to go a little bit slower. So you can kind of see, and I'll lift this up once I'm done with all of these areas here, but when you spend more time and you're going slower across your area, that gives it more time for the color to stick to the paper and thus making it more saturated and darker. So I'll lift my marker up a little bit and I'll go from the mid and fast. So I was down here, now I'm gonna lift it up. Okay. Notice here we've got a little burst of color. Sometimes that happens depending on where the ink is moving out of your marker. I'll slide this over. Okay, now I'll do the same distance and go slower. So I was here about half an inch, okay. Okay, again, the same width, the same distance from the paper. And then I just traveled this line faster than this line. So this is going to have more color density. One more time with being far away. There's a little kind of gap right there, but that's okay. Again, it could just be because my air can is almost out. And so those kind of little, um, not errors, but little flaws are there um, because my can is almost out of air. So that could be happening. If that happens to you, don't panic, just get a new can. So I'll move slower this time, far away. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and again, remove it, cap it and lift this up for y'all to see. So when we're working um, pretty close, that's just your lines that you get between fast and moving slow. Then we've got that middle range. I'm just lifting it up and about a half an inch, moving faster. And then over here, we've got moving slower. And then notice too, when we're farther away from the paper, how much more um, 
uh, I guess, faded the colors look. And that's just because of, you know, it's, it's, it's more pixelated, it's less close to the paper, so it's going to be more frayed and more soft. This will come in handy when we're making gradations, which I'm going to actually test up here. And we're almost done with this, and then I'm going to apply all of these to our stencils. So up in this area, I will actually snap this back. And I'm going to work um, pretty close to my paper. And I'm going to start off in this blue taped zone. So if you notice down here, you've got these little bursts of uh, pigment towards the beginning. And that's because the color, the ink that's in this marker is sitting on the edge ready to be used. So whenever we apply the air at first, it's got a lot of juicy pigment just sitting on the edge of the edge. Sorry, excuse me. So that's why I always start off when I first apply the trigger to go a little bit outside my work area, just so that that first juicy layer of ink is not uh, messing anything up inside the area that I want to be smooth. So I'll go ahead and do that to this area here, starting off my workspace and then working from right to left. Okay, and then if we want to add another layer, we can quickly apply that here at the top. Oh, if you heard that air kind of fade, I think my poor can just ran out of gas. So I'm going to need to switch to my air compressor. I will take this out and unscrew the grip. And I'll set that air can aside off my station. And now I get to show you guys um, what's attached to my compressor. And so I have, this is the Copic Air Adapter. If your um, D60N can runs out of um, air and you're looking for longer use, I would go ahead and get this air adapter. So the air adapter is great because again, right here, I've attached it to my hose that is in my air compressor. So this is for more long-term use and it has the same kind of feel, the same function. I'll hold the other can up as a comparison for size. It is smaller and narrower, but again, it's just allowing you to use the air in the compressor. This one is a standalone. This one is not. This has to be adapted. I mean, it is an adapter. It has to be attached to an air compressor. This one is a standalone. Okay, I'll do the same thing. And I'll take the air grip and insert it and get it about lined up here with that little oval shape. And now I'm ready to go. The difference here, now that I'm working with my air compressor, is when I pull the trigger, you'll start to hear a humming noise from the compressor. You hear that noise? That's normal. That's what air compressors will normally do when they're just refilling and reestablishing the PSI that you have put. I have my PSI set at 60, and that seems to be working really well for me. So that is just my suggestion. And actually, before I finish this area, let me guys just show you what my compressor looks like. This is what my compressor looks like. It weighs about nine and a half pounds. It's pretty heavy, but it's not very large. It has a handle on it too, so it makes it easy for moving around my workstation. Um, and it has these little grips down here at the bottom. So again, this is just a handy thing for me because I use the airbrush a lot for backgrounds, for making cards like I am today, for a lot of different things. So that's why I went ahead and got a compressor. Okay, so I'm gonna slide in my marker of E39 again and make sure that this snapped into place. And I'm gonna do the same thing I practiced up here, down here as well. Again, starting off my um, workspace to make sure that first G layer of color doesn't interfere with what I want to shade. And then I'll just work left to right or right to left.
Okay, I'm gonna let that pause for a second. And then I'm gonna go back in down here and add a few more layers just to show what gradation looks like. Again, starting off my workspace. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take that out. And I'm gonna to start to gently peel back this tape. And we're gonna see some really nice and crispy lines here. This is my favorite part of this process. I'm getting kind of giddy here. I'm such an art nerd, but this is so cool about Copic markers. So again, gently peeling back and look at how crisp that line is. Very much so excited about this. And again, I'm taking my time, even though this is painter's tape, I don't want to rip my paper. So just gonna take off these last two here. If your paper does rip a little bit, um, you can always dab the tape against your clothing to remove some of that excess stickiness. That seems to help for me. Sometimes I'll just quickly dab the tape against like my shirt sleeve or my pants or something. That works really well too. Shannon, audience question. Uh, can you use yes. masking tape versus painter's tape? Is there any real difference? Uh, if you use masking tape, typically the stickiness on that is gonna be stronger. So the chances of the paper kind of fraying can be higher. Again, uh -huh. if you kind of take the tape and um, like dab it against your fabric, it'll remove some of the stickiness. But I suggest either artist tape, which I have some that looks white, and then I got painter's tape just to be safe. Okay, cool, thank you. Yeah, so I'll hold this up. And this is what that application of brown looks like. So that smaller rectangle on the top, that is with the um, D60N standalone can. And then the bottom is with the air adapter and the air compressor. So as you can see, the quality of the ink and how the colors lay on the paper is the same. So it does not matter if you have the D60N or if you have an air compressor, the ink quality is amazing. So this is really, really great. And we're gonna be doing this with our card today. I also have this space here, just in case I needed it to show you know, how you need to start off into the tape and work your way down. But I showed you guys that already. So I'll go ahead and pass on that one. And I'll go ahead and move this out. And I Again, I've got that practice sheet still here, and I'm gonna go ahead and bring out this card again to show. So we've got a few elements going on here. We've got these leaf shapes, and we've got some calligraphy, and then we've got this smooth gradation of blue in the background. So I'm kind of with this um, six piece is some, um, earth tones kind of set here that we've got today, I'm pairing them up. So I'm using the two shades of blue to make this background, the two shades of green to make these leaf shapes, and then the two shades of brown to make this. So I'm kind of dividing it up in that way with this particular set of colors. So what I'm gonna start off with is grabbing a sheet of um, thicker marker paper. And this is what I'm gonna use to go ahead and start with our stencils. This is about mm, 110 pound paper. Again, it's smooth, kind of like a Bristol and it's a premium bond. So it's, it's very good for markers. And I'm gonna grab a stencil. So I'll start with this guy here. And I do wanna mention, you can, I made this stencil myself and I made this stencil actually using the template from last week's class. So if you joined us last week, we used this to make shrink plastic earrings. All I did was use the template to make this shape. So if you happen to join us last week, this will be available um, on our website too. So you can use this to make stencils as well. And that's what I actually did for the demo. Michael's um, has plenty of wonderful stencils too to choose from as well. Uh, just to make this more of a DIY project, I wanted to show you guys, hey, you can, you can make your own if you want to, to make something super special and individualized. So I've got these um, shapes kind of sketched out already. And I'm going to go ahead and lay these down onto this sheet of paper. I'll move that out of the way. And 
I'm just kind of eyeballing it to make sure that this is on my sheet. I'm not placing it smack in the middle because I don't want to waste any of that paper. So I'm just kind of situated right up in this area. And now I'm going to go ahead and grab some tape. So I'll go ahead and start to tape this down. And I like this blue tape because it seems to last for a while, even though I keep sticking it and then taking it apart and sticking it somewhere else again. Okay, so that's taped to the paper and to my scrap sheet. And now I'm gonna take my lighter shade of green. I'll move these into my workspace here. So I'm gonna use this YG13 to start off with. And again, as an illustrator, it does feel kind of strange not using the super brush nib. But after today, I think a lot of people are gonna be pretty excited about this medium broad nib. Snap that into place. And if you see me kind of moving my hand around, that's because I don't have anything underneath in my actual stencil holding it to the paper. So sometimes when the air is applied, it'll lift up which for this demo is okay, because I'm going to cut out these shapes anyways. But if you're looking for that really crisp line, then you can always tape a little bit underneath the stencil too, to make sure it's really stuck down. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and add some color. Okay, that's just one layer of this light green. Now I'm gonna do what I like to call the quick release method, just to touch up any areas that I want to have of a little bit more pigment. So when I say quick release, that means just a quick punch to add a quick spurt of color and then just release it. So this is gonna give juicier colors because I'm just doing a quick release of the pigment sitting right on the end and I'm not holding it to make a consistent line or anything like that. So this is going to give a slightly different effect, but very effective nonetheless. So I'm going to go in these corner areas where there's a little bit less pigment and just quickly add in color. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and remove that and use my next green color, which is YG17. And again, snap that into place. And I'm going to go ahead, similar to, let's bring this out here, similar to this one that I've already got pre-cut. I like keeping the center area more highlighted and using my darker colors here on the outside. So that's what I'm gonna do right here as well. I'm gonna use that quick release method of quickly pulling the trigger and releasing just to cover those edge areas. Okay, now I think I wanna add a few more dots of color up in this area. Maybe one more right there. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and start to remove this and let you guys know what it looks like. Are there any other questions on this um, kind of stenciling section of the demo? Linda wants to know, can you use this method on shrink plastic? Oh, I think you probably can. It just depends, um, I'll remove this and go ahead and keep talking, but it depends on the shrink plastic. If you're using a clear shrink plastic, I'm not sure if the results will be as vibrant. 
um, or if they'll blend as well. But if you're using more of an opaque or like a frosted shrink plastic, I think that would be your better bet with good results. Okay. But I'll go ahead and show this, lift this up. And again, there's certain areas where the stencil started to lift up, so it's not as crisp. But you can see some kind of really nice splattering effects in here and some blending going on. So this is looking pretty cool. I'll set that down. I think too, after you use the stencil for a long period, the stencil itself really becomes a work of art. I really love how vibrant these greens are looking. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the other, another shape, which I'm gonna use the browns for. And I'm gonna go ahead and, actually I might turn this upside down because I know the nib likes to go this direction and how I hold the marker. And I don't want that to cover up my freshly designed leaf. So I'm gonna turn it this way. Take my brown colors, bring those into the workspace. And now I'm going to, again, tape this into place. I think I saw in the chat right down there that someone was asking if you can use this for fabric. I think if it's like a lighter fabric, like a muslin or a thin cotton, you probably can. Um, again, like I had mentioned with the canvas um, co question earlier, if you work closer to the fabric, I think that would be more effective. But if you do want more of a faded effect, then working further away would be great too. If you have just like a couple of swatches at home of fabric, test it out first and then see before you invest in a large piece. But I think that would work just fine. Just not some kind of fabric that's super thick or um, synthetic, like a fake leather or something. Also get a sealant of some kind too. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I think I've got a little bit of a pencil mark there. That's okay. But I've got this down. So let's start it up again with E34. I do love mentioning this one is called Toast. I love looking at the cap sometimes and figuring out what's the color name for this marker. I think it's really neat with 358 colors, you get all these really fun names. And this one just makes me hungry. So I'm gonna apply my Toast color here. Uh, smoothly across this shape. I'm going to add a little bit more from the bottom here. Again, Pardon my air compressor. Using that quick release method, just adding in a few places of extra color. And notice too, I'm actually, pardon me, because I work so direct over on top, but I'm really about mm, two to three inches up from the surface. I like to get a nice faded effect. So for these brown colors, because they're not um, uh, lighter like the green colors, these are very dense. So I'm working further up. And I do want to mention too, the more you practice, especially those um, four techniques that I showed at the beginning of this class of this project, the more you practice that of and getting comfortable of how close you like to hold this, how you like to mix colors together, you know, how comfortable you are making a line and making a gradation, just by practicing those things, you'll really start to get the hang of it and you'll find what works best for you. I'm showing you guys what I like and what works best for me. But again, just practicing really goes a long way. Okay. And as you can see from my stencil here, I like to use this dark, um, what is this dark color? Leather along the outside. So I'll gradually kind of spurt in these colors in addition. <laughs>
okay. And I do want to show this in case you guys want to. If you want to work light to dark to back to your light color again, you can just soften any of these blends. If you go from a, say, E, even though this is E34, say you were using E31 with E39. Well, that's quite a value jump there from light to dark. So if you wanted to go back to your lighter color after you've applied the dark to kind of soften those blends, that works just like if you're using the super brush nib to blend. Okay, so all I did was just add a few more dabs of this E34 to soften those blends because that E39 is quite a dark, rich color. So now I'm going to do my favorite part of revealing the tape and show what this one looks like. And then we've just got one more of these shapes to spray paint or spray with Copic. So there we go. Gently remove this. Okay, and then I'll show what this looks like. So that's our um, smooth gradation of our two brown colors in this set, the E34 and the E39. And again, the um, stencil lifted up just a little bit here because I didn't tape it down, but that's all right for this demo. We're gonna cut this out anyway, so it's all good. Next, I'm gonna use this area here to make the longer, skinnier green shape. And I will begin taping this down as well. Shannon, Leanne's got a question. Did you use an X-Acto knife to cut out your stencil? Yes, I did use an X-Acto knife. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then I also have a, um, a cutting board. And this is a um, thicker mixed media paper. If you have cardstock, that would work too. If you have like a thin film plastic, like a typical stencil will come in, that obviously works as well. I like the thicker cardstock because I don't want things to bleed through and I know that it's a good quality paper. So what's nice too, if you make your own stencils is you can use this hollow shape for some kind of decoration later on too. And I can actually show you what that looks like at a later point. Actually, Gihana and Kanaiala actually had the same question about where they can view these. And they're on Michael's YouTube channel. Go to Michael's stores on YouTube and you'll find past classes. And this one should be up soon afterwards if you want to check back on the class. Yes. And I know that if you go to um, michaels.com slash classes, and then I think there's like they're split up into categories. I know that all of these Copic demos are split up into the fine art category. So if you go there, you'll find all of our classes as well. And it will, it will link you to their YouTube. Okay, so I've got my green, my light green color snapped in and I'm gonna go ahead and smoothly apply this green. Give my air compressor a second. And I'm going to do the quick release and add a few more dots of color. All right. Now with the YG17, just to go around the border. Here we go. It's always tempting to want to cap the marker like this, but that will not work. <laughs> so always take it out of the air grip. And then let's reveal the last shape. Okay. 
The last thing that we have um, with the airbrush for completing our card is going to be, I think, the most challenging to get started because it's a larger area of space that we're going to be coloring. So hang on in there. We're almost done. I'm just going to lift this up and show this too. So that's what this leaf shape is looking like. And what's nice too about this particular demo, how I'm cutting these shapes out, say in my stencil, maybe I had some kind of a wonky line. If I don't like it, I can always remove it as I cut it out. So that'll be really convenient, I think. But yeah, I'm just showing these. This is upside down, but you guys get the picture of the speckles and the dots and the shading there. Same with this brown, really nice leaf shapes. So um, we'll just cut these out, but for the demo, I actually already have some pre-cut out. So I will bring those into the camera view. So I've got these guys all ready to go. Actually, I think my order that I like is like that. So even on a white, say you don't wanna use that much um, you know, blue up in here, or maybe you don't want the gradation to go nearly as far down, you don't have to. Um, you can always just bring that B41 further up or maybe just use one or one of the colors instead. This is up to you. But I like the gradation in the background. I really like how it makes these colors pop. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring out a sheet of paper. Um, it's right behind me. So this here is an A4 size. So this is, oh gosh, about eight and two, I think it's like 8.25 by 11.75 inches. So not quite eight and a half by 11, but I've measured out an area. This is seven inches across. And from this tape to this tape is five and a half inches. So the whole entire card, if I were to lift this up, is seven inches long. And I've laid this tape down already in the middle. And I've laid this protector sheet so that when I am spray painting here at the top with my darker blue color, I don't get any of that color on the opposite side of the card. And what I mean by that is this. So let's say I flatten out my finished card. You see how I have that nice and crisp line right there? That's due to tape. So I can't say how much tape really matters when you're working with the ABS. So just by having a nice firm sheet of tape and a protector sheet right behind it, you'll get really crisp lines like this. So Shannon, we have okay. a question from Leanne. Leanne wants to know, do you have to clean the airbrush nozzle tip? And if so, what do you use to clean it off with? Oh, uh, yes, that is a very good question. So um, lucky for me, I have some on hand, but I use a Q-tip and the zero colorless blender. So what I would do is you can, you know, keep it attached or you don't have to, but dip this in zero colorless blender or say rubbing alcohol or even nail polish remover should do the trick um, and douse it so it's full in that pigment, I mean, sorry, in that alcohol and then just squeegee it. So yeah, just like that, if you see any types of marks in here, because sometimes they will rub, you just douse this with zero colorless blender or alcohol and that's how you clean it. So very easy. Same with if you have any ink on the can or on the um, plastic body itself, just use zero blender or alcohol and that should get rid of the stain. They're very easy and the Q-tip fits very well in here. So very, very convenient, I must say. I'm going to go ahead and move this outside my workstation because now I'm going to do some pretty heavy spray painting or spray Copic ink. And I'm going to go ahead and tape this here and set this aside and bring out two more pieces of tape to tape off these edges. Are there any more questions while I'm masking this off? Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> I just want to say thank you guys for joining me. I know we've had a fair amount of demos this month, and I really appreciate if you guys join just for today or if you've seen a couple of them. We're really glad to be here with you guys. Okay, so I've got my 
Yeah, front of my card squared away. I've got my test sheet behind me. And this is tilted because this is how I like to work. So again, feel free to move your paper however you need with what's comfortable for you. So I'm going to take my blue markers here and I'm actually gonna start with my darker color, which is B45. And I'm gonna start at the top and work my way down. And again, I like how this effect looks back here. So I'm just gonna bring that down into my card. So I'll take out the medium broad and again, snap that into place and let's get started. Okay, if you notice too, as I was working my way down in this section, I was working pretty fast and I was also lifting it off the paper to get more of that natural gradation. I am gonna go over this area um, at least two or three more times now to get in that solid gradation. So here we go with layer number two. And as you saw there, I lifted my hand up. And so I got a little bit more of a juicy line there than I expected, but I can try and blend that out a little bit more. Um, that will stand out a little bit though. So I'm gonna do what I can to work it away by adding some more layers. And if you notice too, I'm now doing that quick release method. So I'm getting all of those juicy pigments right on the edge of that nib. So by doing quick little releases, that's really gonna give punch and dark saturation to your color. And I'm holding it very far back right now and just dabbing in, pardon me, just dabbing in some colors here towards the midsection and down. Because again, um, as I've been saying throughout this demo, if you're holding it closer, it's gonna be very intense and we come across more like a streak. If you hold it further back, the pigment will be more splattered and not and look more spontaneous, essentially, less like a line. So I've got a couple areas over here. They're a little more pigmented. Maybe I'll try and work those out just a little bit more and then I'll switch to the lighter color B41. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and make the switch. Okay, and I'm going to work from the bottom here. And because this color B41 is very pale, it's very light. So it's going to be a little bit hard to see 
how much I'm adding to the paper, just try and look off to the side of your paper here to that test sheet and add that as a comparison. But if you want more um, saturation and it easier to see, maybe go with a little bit darker color. I'm going to start to add down here. Shannon, when you're ready, we got another audience question. Yes, you have a question? So Peg wants to know, do the Copic markers get used up fast with airbrushing or is it still like, does it, do they go out as quickly as if they were drawing? Um, I don't really notice any kind of difference when I'm using my airbrush. So I just use B41 and it still comes off just fine, like normal, like that's its normal shade. Um, just using the medium broad because that's what I've been using this whole day. Right there on the tip, that's where the longer edge is. It's a bit more saturated because the air is directly being hit to the shorter side. That's this shorter side is where, let me flip it like it normally is. That's where the air is directly bursted from. So this side does maybe have a little bit more pigment built up to it than the shorter side right after you use it. But let's use the super brush. Yeah, that's acting the same. So it, it, again, if it does seem a little bit funky, maybe your marker is starting to run out of ink or to reactivate it, maybe add some zero colorless blender to maybe liven it up. But the only thing I notice is the opposite side, the longer side might be a little bit more pigmented and that's just on the medium broad. Otherwise, no. And um, I haven't noticed them drying out any sooner. So I've been using a lot of earth tones like this project, a lot of um, earth tones and blues to make these large spaces, to make landscape designs, whatnot, and skylines. But it has not drained the ink from my marker more than typical coloring would. So it does, it does last a very long time. So. Cool, thank you. Okay. Yes, thank you. I'm gonna start to peel this away. And we're almost done with our card. Um, let's see, the tricky part is how to get the tape off sometimes once it's taped down so firmly. There we go. So yeah, you can start to see those really nice crisp lines. Oh, such a fan. And I've got this test strip of paper here, so have no fear. The back side of my card is not damaged. So I can go ahead and set that aside and then just take off this bottom portion here. So I do want to show you guys something that's really neat. I know in the past of uh, previous demos, I think it was our first demo with a wave pattern bookmark. Someone had asked me, you know, hey, Shannon, what if I color over my pencil marks? Can I erase the pencil mark still once it's colored with Copic? And I said, no, unfortunately, no. Once there's ink covering it, it's permanent. But if you pay attention to your taping, so way down here, I taped it just slightly over this line that I drew. And again, this is probably very minuscule. I might need a better camera for this. But you, if you have an eraser right here, I can actually erase this line away because I didn't actually put any pigment on it. So for example, I'll take my eraser and work off this bottom line. So say you weren't actually cutting this out like I am, I will actually cut that line, but there is no pencil line. I didn't erase this one over here, but down here where that soft blue is, there is no pencil line anymore because I taped it just directly above it. So that because there's no ink on it, I can erase it, which is really, really neat. So let's say you have a piece that you don't want to cut out and you don't care about the lines. Um, you just make sure you cover it slightly and protect it. And that way you can erase it. So now I'm just going to cut out this border here. And then we will be just assembling the card and that's it. So let me cut this out just really quick. 
Are there any other um, questions about the airbrush? Anyone? We're good? Seems that way. Awesome. Okay, I'm just gonna cut these strips here on the side. Just to keep it quick. I can always cut that out later. But essentially, what we've got here is that really, really nice crisp line. And that's just from the masking tape. And then obviously we had that protector sheet, so there's no splatters up here. But look at how crisp that line is. And what I love too about this particular sketch six piece set is how nice these blues look like an ocean. Like I love making landscape drawings with this. So these really make a nice oceanic kind of sky effect. You could even draw your little, little like city skyline here. This would be a great background. So really fun effects with the airbrush. I'm gonna go ahead and um, assemble my leaves kind of how I want them and glue them down and I'll fold it at the end. So what I've done for today's demo is the green um, and then the brown and then the green shape. I think I like it yeah, right around there. That looks really nice. I think I'm actually going to um, drop this down a little bit for you guys to see so it's a little closer here at the end. Okay, so there we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and take out my glue stick and just lightly glue these down. And if you don't wanna leave like a little note or whatnot, you can center these leaves or, you know, turn them any other way that you please. Okay, I could overlap it, but I'll glue that right around there. Okay, then my last shape. And I'll put that, oh, lift this up just a little bit, right around there. Okay, I'm really liking how that's looking. And then I'll take a little bit more glue if I need to and put that down. Maybe a little bit more up here. Okay, and then like I mentioned briefly in the very intro of the video, I've got my multi-liner pen and I prefer the um, thicker nibs. So I've got a 0 0.8. I know it's a very popular size is 0 0.5 or 0 0.3. So I like this thick lettering. So that's why I'm using this 0 0.8. And all I'm going to do this is just my regular handwriting. If you want to get fancy with your calligraphy, by all means, I'm just going to tilt my paper slightly and write Happy Thanksgiving out in my regular cursive. So I've got happy. And then I'll put Thanksgiving right underneath here. Okay, so again, this was just one layer of the pigment. If I want to add anything else or say some more line work in there, I can do that too. But this was just my regular cursive. If you wanna do calligraphy and go fancy, by all means, I just wanted to show you guys just a finishing touch with that multi-liner pen. So now I'm just going to go ahead and fold this. So I'll bring that around on the crease and pinch it. And bring that more into view. And if you notice, if you're trying to rub your fingers against this Copic um, layer of ink here with the airbrush, it's a little bit sticky. 
when you're trying to run it smooth. So you can hear a little bit of a tack to it, which is normal. That is what it should feel like. Okay. So there's the back of our card, right? Nice and blank. So we can customize this with any kind of spoof or any kind of family picture or whatever else you want. And then here on the front, we've got our happy Thanksgiving card. And I do wanna mention, so this is um, premium bond, 110 pound paper. So you can kind of see the uh, handwriting if you hold it in the right light, you can kind of see it bleed through, but otherwise there is nothing of the actual blue that bleeds through. So say you want to cover that up anyways, you can maybe insert some kind of patterned paper or something there if you want. Um, but if not, you can just leave a nice note down here on the bottom. And there you have a Thanksgiving card. So at this time, if you guys have any kind of creation, whether it's the whole card, whether it's a few stencil shapes, um, hold them up on your camera and I want to check them out. I'll hold this here. Let's see what y'all got. Yeah. I got this here. I also want to drop that in. Thank you guys so much for joining today too. I really, really appreciate you guys coming and checking out this airbrush. So awesome, nice. I see Pam's got some stencils going on there. Nice, they look really good. Awesome. Really neat. Well, yeah, so this is um, just the airbrush. And if you wanna tag us or follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and then I also have my own personal account if you wanna see what I'm up to, um, Shannon Brooke spelled B-R-O-U-K. So I've got other tips and tricks on there as well, as well as on all of our social channels. So please feel free to check us out. And if I went over anything too fast today, the Michaels will have it up online for you guys to double check. So um, yeah, I think that's about it. Nate, do you have anything else to add? Nope, that should be it. All our links are up there. And uh, as I mentioned in the chat to Gideon, this will be uploaded on Michael's YouTube channel. You can also go to michaels.com slash classes and you will see links of everything you need there. Yes, awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for joining and I hope you guys all have a very safe and happy Halloween. Have a good one, y'all. Thank you for coming yeah, by. Have a good one. Yep, yeah, bye.